Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to start today with a joyful proclamation, a confession of faith. And it is a new song, so if you're a person that needs a second to engage, go ahead. If you're a person that's like, I like to sing even if I'm not sure what the words are, or, you know, I mean, we have the screens for a reason, people. So sing out, sing loud and proud, make a mistake because we are going to be worshiping God today. And he sees all of our worship as joyful, joyful, I was going to say noise, but joyful songs to him. Um, so would you stand with us as we sing together? I believe, I believe 
God. Hear these words from Psalm 62. Now it talks about silence, which we weren't just silent just then, but for God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us.
This morning as we go to prayer, worthy is his name. So what praise do you wish to pray, pray aloud, praise him aloud with this morning? Thank you for health and healing, Lord. Thank you for the move and wind of the refilling of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Always extended. Yes. Going before us always. for being constant. Father, we are grateful because worthy is your name. Uh, it's the name above all names, Jesus. Father, and as we think about the gift that you have given to us, it's, it's incredible that you would send your son to redeem and rescue us and free us from the separation from one, from us to you, as we so choose. But then to free us from any fear, any anxiety, any concern that we might have that really is limiting, Father, you have come to liberate us. And so even on this morning, as I think about that word, that word that really is not as uncommon as we think, Jesus, but it's Jesus Christ, the anointed one, who sets us free. And I think about that over our world right now. And as uh, was already lifted, we, we pray for Israel. We pray for the Middle East. We pray for our world. We ask, Lord Jesus, that peace would prevail. That it would prevail in the lives of those that are, that it, Father, where it makes a difference, not only in the Middle East with Israel and Hamas, but Father, around the world, but Father, even closer to home. For even as you were speaking into my heart as I was standing there thinking about Israel and Hamas, you said it's resident in all of us. The unforgiveness, the inconsiderate n nature of, of being who we are to, to, to really kind of uh, to be unkind, to lack gentleness. So, Father, as, as we, we lift your name high, Lord, we come to realize how far we are from who you are. And so I ask that while we ask for the peace, in the Middle East. We ask for the peace that, Father, we wish to happen in Ukraine and Russia and around the world. Father, we, we ask for your peace to prevail in our lives with one another. That Jesus' name would mean something to us. That, Father, we would count it worthy enough to live into the kingdom To not just 
say we forgive, but live in forgiveness, to live in love, to live in kindness, to live in grace, to live in mercy, to live in humility, to live, Lord, as your son did. We want to be able to lift the name of Jesus in a way, Lord, that allows our hearts to soar with you, to be renewed by you. So, Lord, we lay these things before you. Lord, we also come in with maybe other things. We have friends that are needing a healing touch. And there's no way the doctors are going to touch that. Only the name of Jesus is going to touch that. Lord, there are, there are questions about job and finances, concerns and worries that are entangling us. Maybe even questions about our own self. But it's only the name of Jesus, the one in whom is worthy of all praise, that is going to set us loose. So, Lord, as we, as we sing into this next song, this is a song of praise. I pray that it, Lord, that it becomes a prayer on our tongues. But that as we pray it and as we sing it, that, Lord, it liberates not just our tongues and our voices, but it, it releases the very spaces of our hearts that are constrained today, that are in bondage today. Spirit move. Spirit move. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body
it one more time just the voices oh praise seated. Father God, as many of your people gather in your house to eat at your table today, may we be a family defined by kindness toward others. Jesus, we pray for those who are lonely or on the margins today, and especially for those who are attending church for the first time or the last time. May they find themselves noticed and loved and for those who are in and near church meeting today, may we always be ready to welcome the prodigal son. Holy Spirit, revive your church today. Form us into the most welcoming and diverse community on the earth, that the world may see your love, believe in your mercy, and receive your invitation home. It just struck me going through the invitation, uh, going through our announcements, just how welcoming and loving this family has been to me. And that is my challenge to you today. So as we go through these, just bear with me. <laughs> um, first and foremost, we always have our prayers and praise giving back to God financially. We have three ways to do it. We can do it online. You can do it in our giving boxes in the back or by good old fashioned snail mail. This helps our church be the church. Do the programs, be the people. Our next opportunity, um, the connect card you were handed on your way in or if you're joining us online, go ahead and fill that out. I know I say that every time I'm up here, but I know this to be a family of pray, prayer warriors. <clears throat> and so whatever it is on your mind right now, get it out of you, get it on that card, online on that card. If you are with us today for the first time, go ahead and take it to the back to one of our connection team members and they'll give you a free t-shirt. Next coming up, we have a service day, our church work day. We have these uh, twice a year. It's super fun to just be the family to take care of our property. So we've got jobs for everyone. You know, the kids can wash some windows and stuff. Inside, outside, this Saturday coming up from 8 o'clock till noon. Next, um, 
we have our discipleship bands. Uh, if this is a term you have never heard before, um, think of Band of Brothers. Um, is it? It was a show. <laughs> But it was a group of men who were combined in their purpose. And so this is what discipleship banding is. And it's a group of three to five people banding together once a week. Um, Steve is going to be having a training coming up. So please watch for it and consider and pray who you can band with, who you can be in just accountability with for one hour a week. Also coming up, and this is the one that like, who. Um, Kids Hope USA, we have um, an amazing opportunity to be the hope to our friends over at Perry Elementary. Studies show, and I can absolutely affirm this, that at least one stable, healthy relationship from an adult to a kid is so imperative for their growth. So we as a church have this opportunity to uh, be mentors and prayer partners. The trainings are on the 18th and the 25th at 6. So consider, pray, and be a part of the hope in one kid's life. And I think that's it. <laughs> Sorry, it was just an emotional morning. Um, so go ahead and break out your Bibles as we get ready to hear the word. Good morning. Um, our, our scripture today comes from Daniel 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Dan. Well, welcome this morning. My name's Steve. If we've not met or we have met and you've forgotten, like I do, uh, that way you know. That way you know. Hey, I want to uh, just kind of expand a little bit on, um, on Crystal's uh, endorsement of Lectio 365. You can find it in your app store, um, and many of us have found it to be a great resource um, um, to go with whatever else we're walking through. It's a, it's a great resource. We can talk about it more, but it's found in your app store if you're interested. What if I shared with you that the most important spiritual quality that had the great potential to change the, tra to change the trajectory of your life? What if I shared with you this quality that absolutely and completely is the key to your spiritual strength it's not only the key to your spiritual strength, it is just key to your, your ministry impact. Yep, your ministry impact, not mine. Uh, the quality of your physical health, uh, the key to your relational intimacy, and, and the key to your financial potential. Is this quality something that you would want to know about? Would you want to know what this is? Good. Well, you know, if everybody said no, we could, you know, we're done. It's all right. You know, I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, good morning. We are in a series, message, series message, uh, message series called Predecide. At Ipsy Free, we are a people who follow Jesus by loving God and loving all people. To the end of loving God and all people, we desire to share and show the life of God so that they too may choose to follow Jesus themselves. Yet as scripture states, salvation is free. You can find that. Yet it's not always easy to follow Jesus. It might be actually quite challenging. Yet I believe what we're going to talk about today can kick the challenge in the rear. I really do. I believe that this is one of the keys to unlocking uh, successful 
consistent, well, I already said it, life. So it's the power of consistency. It's the power of consistency. Can you say that? Consistency. Yeah, it is. Your consistency has more, more potential to impact your life than you would ever imagine. Many of you may be saying in your head, oh no, because I'm consistently inconsistent, right? Yeah, most of us are. That's, that's the truth of who we are as humans. We'll get to that in a little bit. We're inconsistent in what we eat. We're inconsistent about our, desi- you know, our desire to exercise. We're inconsistent in reading the Bible, our prayer times. Uh, you know, we can't even get to places on time, right? So some of you might say, the only thing I am consistent at is being inconsistent. If you find yourself like most of the rest of us, with really good intentions, but you struggle to follow through, I want to know, I want you to know that I completely understand. Can I tell you that there, there's one area that, uh, one area that I've struggled with, or uh, that we, and I'll get to it in a second, that we've struggled with uh, most of our married life. Yep, it's this, dating my wife. It's dating my wife. Yep. Obviously, I dated before we got married. I mean, who isn't into the hunt, right? Okay, that was maybe a little more graphic than you want to know. <laughs> but school, work, and I'm not, I'm not talking about their school, our schooling, then their school, then our, you know, our kids' school, all took precedent over what I think is vital in all marriage relationships. Yeah, yeah, okay. We, we went out. We went to school activities, absolutely. Church, yep, she's here. She's just not in the same place that I'm in. Uh, Kathy's work activities were a large part of what we did. We went on vacations, absolutely, as a family. We would plan date nights, yet it would not last. I mean, somebody would need one of us somewhere else, or both of us. The complexities of trying to wedge in date nights, wedge in dates and date nights into life was just extremely difficult. Yet this led to inconsistency and it led to other things in our marriage that just are not healthy and I would say are not healthy across the board. Paul talks a a bit about being inconsistent. You remember this in Romans chapter 7? If you don't, um, we can show it to you right here. Romans 7. I do not understand what I do for I want to do uh, for what I want to do I do not do but I what I hate to do for I know that the that good itself does not dwell in me that is in my sp- sinful nature for I have the desire to do what is good but I cannot carry it out for I do not do the good I want to do but the evil I do not want to do this I keep on doing You know consistency matters But you and I find ourselves to be often inconsistent in the things we know that are important to be consistent about. But you, maybe like I, are tired of having good intentions and falling short again and again and again. If that's the case, then this message is for you. So before we kick it into gear a little bit further, let's pray. Father... We pray that by the power of your word and the presence of your spirit that you would teach us, encourage us, inspire us, move us to a God-honoring life of consistency following Jesus and being empowered by your spirit. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. As followers of Jesus, our decisions are incredibly important. In fact, we've been talking about this, the, the direction of our life is determined by the quality of our decisions. The direction of our life is determined by the quality of our decisions. So what we have been attempting to do and what I've been bringing to you during this message series is we're not waiting for the moment in the future when we're faced with a situation we know is coming and then making a decision. We are pre-deciding those decisions now. We're getting ahead of when those come to us and they're there because they're coming. You know what they are. They faced you already in the past. They will face you 
in the future, you have the choice. You have the power, God being your helper, to do that. So we have determined to face our future with predetermining power. Predetermining power, it's, it's an incredible tool that allows you to, well, not have to decide in the moment. How many of you uh, remember the days, if you are parents, when your kids would walk to their closet and they would like go, I don't know what I'm wearing. Maybe this is you this morning. I don't know what I'm wearing, right? And you realize that they have 10,000 things that they could wear, combinations of things, right? Maybe not so much. But you know what happens when we limit the, those choices? We limit a little constipation in our day. Okay, maybe that was too graphic. <laughs> but it's true, right? When we go, you're going to wear this or you're going to wear this. Uh, my wife was great. She would go, all right, you have this or this. Which one? No, I want that one. No, these are before you right now. These are the choices you have. This one or that one. It just, but the, the idea of pre-deciding is just so powerful. And not only that, because it's in our flesh, we know that the devil attacks and we're going to be ready for his attacks. It's not just our own flesh, but he plays into that. And we're going to pre-decide to be consistent. Uh, next week, we'll talk about being devoted. Next week, we'll talk about the day being devoted. But today, we're talking about being consistent. There are many people you and I admire in life. There are many people you and I admire in life. We, we may not know them personally, but we admire them from afar. Or maybe we do know them personally, and we admire them. And my question to you is, why is it that you admire them? Why is it that you might admire them? Uh, possibly and probably they excel at something you want to excel at. That's not the only reason we admire people, but that's a large reason, right? So let's just play this off a little bit. And if uh, this is, you can talk back if you'd like. So in basketball, who do you admire? Come on, I know you got it in you. Who do you admire? You don't have to raise your hand here, man. Just say it. Stephen Kerr. Stephen Kerr. All right? <laughs> Uh-oh, we have a little tension here. Yeah. Yeah, why do we why do we like why do we like him? Because he knows what it is to practice. He knows what it is to be able to make three-point shots when nobody else can make three-point shots. Some of us are a little bit older. We still like Michael Jordan. Because <laughs> he was able to do it when nobody else could do it, right? Okay, what about football? Who do you admire? All right, how about Barry Sanders? Well, all right, this is a little, there you go. He was able to do things on the field that others were not able to do. And you look, look at film at how he played, or, you know, they'll do highlight clips, and you go, well, how did he... How was he able to do that? Obviously, there was natural talent. Not everybody can do what these people do. He's also, they also did stuff that was consistent. They practiced more than anybody else. Folks. How about, uh, all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll just stop there because we could go into a bunch of them, right? But you get it. The, the idea of practicing over and over again, the idea of being able to connect with the ball, to be able to shoot it consistently out of muscle memory, to be able to speak and communicate in ways that other people can't because they can read the room, right? We all have our own niche. We could be in, even those who are in engineers, we have these people that we kind of connect with and we go, how in the world do they think of that? Because they continue to innovate. They continue to work. See, sex, successful people do consistently, consistently what other people do occasionally. Occasionally. When I mention the name Daniel from the Bible, what comes to your mind? Go ahead. What comes to your mind? Lions, Lions yeah. Faithful. Faithful. Alex, man, you're there. Yeah. Uh, consistent would be another word you could say for Daniel, right? 
Maybe, it was, maybe it's due to the stories told in Daniel, yet he was mo- one of the most consistent biblical leaders in all of Scripture. The, one of the most, morally, relationally. He was the whole package when it comes to consistency. Now, let me give you a little backdrop of where we're going. Around 605 B.C., this is, about 18, uh, this is about 18 years after the evil Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. And the Babylonians, they came in there with their government and abducted a lot of the young boys. Now, they didn't look for just any of them. They wanted the sharpest, the brightest, the best. And they usually were about the age of 12. The reason? Just like any conquering uh, realm wants to do. They want to indoctrinate. They want the best, and they want to indoctrinate them with their own thought and process. So they uh, began to do this with Daniel, right, and his crew. They wanted to feed them their type of food. They wanted to teach them their type of education. They wanted to teach them, teach uh, their values so that they can be part of that Babylonian empire. I mean, that was their goal. And that was kind of a, that was, that was just the way it was. But in this whole process, Daniel stood out amongst the rest of them. The king at this time was named Darius, and he noticed this, this young man, Daniel, who displayed this unusual consistency. And I don't think it was, we'll get to it in a second, I think it was in almost everything. His moral, his relational, everything. And consistency is contagious, by the way. It's attractive. For those who want to excel, they see, oh, I mean, uh, uh, I'm losing the author, but uh, there's an author that wrote about the fact that it takes 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours before you become an expert in any one field. These are those type of people that spend those 10,000 hours doing that one thing well, we all want to, myself included, want to see ourselves in a multiple of things. They just think about that one thing and they do it over and over again. It's contagious. And they wanted to raise him up and promote him. Some of the Babylonian cedar, Babylonians themselves didn't like this interloper and they wanted to get rid of him. We don't want this guy. We want to, he's getting our spot. We're the Babylonians. He's not. Why are they letting him in, Right? But they, so they decided to dig up dirt on Daniel and get him canceled. Now, could they? No, they couldn't. They tried. Verse 4 of Daniel 6 says this, At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of governmental affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. I mean, those are incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful qualities. He was faithful, Alex. He was always responsible and he was completely trustworthy. What do you need to do to have those qualities? Well, I would argue that one of the things you need to do is have consistency. And so these enemies who didn't want Daniel to get their job, they said, okay, we can get this guy on being devoted to his God. Devoted to his God. We're going to attack just, we're going to go straight up at that. So these guys went to the king. And they weren't straight up about their deal, right? They probably went in and said, hey, king, you are the goat. You're the king above all kings, right? Right? And they laid it on thick. They said, you're the best. Nobody can fill your shoes. And you should decree that if anyone prays to any God besides you, that they, well, they will be thrown into the lion's den. And that's exactly what transpired. He's like, he's flattered. Careful of the flattery in our lives, right? People come up, hey, you're the best. What do you want? (laughs) Right? Um. Not always is it that way, but, but he signs off, and his signet ring strikes, strikes on the paper, right? What do you think? What do you think happened? What do we know that happened? Daniel was so faithful and consistent with God that 
Daniel 6.10 tells us exactly what happens. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows were open to Jerusalem. Three and three days times a day, he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to God just as he had done before. He didn't change anything because somebody had decreed something. Daniel did what he always did because it always put him in the right place with the one that mattered the most, God himself, Yahweh. Well, the Babylonian leaders got wind of this and said, hey, King Darius, your boy, you know, the one you like, Daniel, he's praying to that God. Well, you know, King Darius liked Daniel, but not so much to kind of, uh, you know, lower his expectations. So he was thrown into the lion's den overnight. Daniel 6.23 says this, the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. I mean, he lifted Daniel out of the den. And then when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Why? Because he trusted in God. He didn't trust in anyone else or anything else, not even in King Darius, and whom I'm sure he had a pretty good relationship with. I mean, King Darius didn't even want to see him die. But, you know, come and they go. I mean, seriously, that's how it happens. But where did he learn this trust? Where was the trust forged at? Can I tell you, I think that it was not forged in the lion's den. That would have been a little too late. I believe that Daniel learned to trust, trust God in his prayer closet. In his prayer closet. His faith wasn't built in the battle. His faith was built when he was on his knees with God intimately, one-on-one. -on -one. He had a consistent and sought-after heart of God. Three times a day, he was there. Day after day, week after week, month after month, he consistently sought God. It's not what we occasionally do that makes the difference. It's what we consistently do that makes the the difference. So what do we do? What are our next steps? So how do we grow in our consistency, consistency when we are so ourselves inconsistent? I want to give you a game plan. Three important thoughts that I want to give to you in growing consistency. Number one, start with the why. Start with the why. Always. Uh, <laughs> why are we doing this? What, what's up? Right? If we want to grow in consistency, we're pre-deciding that we're going to be consistent. We start with a why. Why did Daniel pray consistently? Well, I can tell you that it probably was not for an outward show. It wasn't like the Pharisees we read about that Jesus points to in Scripture, saying they are demonstrating that they want to be, how, be spiritual, praying on street corners in front of other people. Daniel went to his closet, knelt down, knelt down three times a day because he was devoted to his God. That's why he did what he did. He was devoted. He pre-decided three times a day, I'm going to pray because I need to pray. It's, it's essential for my living, my breathing. See, it, it's a lot of times our goals fail, friends, is because they're the results of our desires, not of our devotion. Again, we'll get to it. It's a result of our desire, not our devotion. If you have a desire, you might have a why, but, it, but it, the why pulls out of the devotion. You, you don't have a compelling why when you have just a desire. Right? It's why so many times when we we say that we're going to lose weight, we talk about doing it two weeks from now. I'm going to start the diet two weeks from now. The why is not strong enough. Because when we walk past the, we, we, we know we should have a salad, and we walk past the chocolate cake, the chocolate cake will win every single time. The devotion is not there. It's why in many cases, when we go to our doctor, our doctor will tell you, hey, you know what? You need to stop smoking. Uh, you might need to stop drinking. Uh, you might need to cut out salt. And we go, yeah, 
well, maybe in a couple weeks, maybe in a month. The desire doesn't meet in the right place. The why is not strong enough. To grow consistently, start with the why. Why do you want to be more consistent? And the question we have to ask ourselves, much like Daniel had to ask himself, why am I doing what I'm doing? So why, where do you want to grow? Closer to God? If you want to grow closer to God, I thank God for that. A, a better marriage, better relationships, financial stability, uh, to quit this bad habit, to start something. I mean, whatever it is. So let's take a few of these, not all of them. Well, I want to be closer to God. Why? Well, th this, is the, this is the right thing to do. It's always the right thing to do. But why do you want to go closer to God? Because that's what church people do, right? I mean, that's a good reason. Or I'm, I'm sick and tired of the, uh, sick and tired of, of the devil distracting me. I believe I'm created by God for his glory, and I want to serve him wholeheartedly. I mean, we, our why has to be strong enough to compel us into devotion to doing what we're asking us to do. That drives the devotion. Maybe you want to have a better marriage. Why? Well, you might say in the surface, and you dig deeper, it'll go further down, I believe, because my spouse is a jerk, sick, and, sick of them. I pray for them and pray for my spouse. I just want to become better. No. That won't hold you in it. I tell you, it will not hold you. How about this? I want to honor God with the vows I made at the altar. I want to honor God with the vows I made at the altar because I want to leave a godly example to my kids and to the world around me. I want a legacy left for my grandchildren. They have a faith in the, in the faith that I have in God and a marriage that's built on the faith that's devoted to him. See, we have to ask our why. What is the why behind it? You know? It's not about willpower. It's about the why. The power of why. When you know your why, you will find a way. You will find a way. This brings out devotion. This is when the king says, you can't pray? No, I've got my why. I need God. I need God greater than I need you. I need God three times a day. I need to seek him in prayer because I promise you when you want to be consistent, you're going to have some obstacles. There are going to be some rough bumps in your life that we're going to try to knock you off from being consistent. You're going to lack support from your friends, even the very closest ones to you. You're going to uh, even lack maybe that willpower you wanted to go into. You need to have a greater why, the devotion in it. Everything we do depends on the spirit of the living God who empowers us to be able to do what not our desires dictate, but what our devotion is, our why. When your values are clear, you just, your decisions are easier. If you want to become more consistent, define your why. Spend time thinking about why do I need to do this? Why is this important? Friends, uh, if you're here this morning um, and some of your friends who used to come with you are not here this morning, their why was not defined clearly. It's just as simple as that. And we can get into individual scenarios, but I can tell you their why was not defined well. Second one, plan to fail. Plan to fail. Sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? But it, this is important. You plan to fail. You actually plan to not be perfect. Yep, I said that. You need to hear that because you're not, as much as we think we are. Daniel prayed three times, three times, uh, three times a day, and we read that just like he did before. But let me ask the question. Do you think he ever missed a day? Do you ever think he missed a prayer time? Yeah, that's one to think about. It doesn't say he didn't miss a prayer time. It just says as he did before. I want to point that out. I mean, I think, because he's human just like us, that he probably did. 
He probably did. King Darius said to him one time, hey, Daniel, I need you to stay late from work. And he's like, okay, you know. And he missed an evening. Maybe that didn't happen, but could. Or he's caught in traffic. I don't know. You get the point, though, right? The reality is we're human. We, we will fail. It's not that our devotion is waning, but that the reality is we will fail. It, why is it that... Why is it that so, much, so many of us are inconsistent? It's because we're, we're not often, we're an all or nothing type of people. I, I am totally in on that one. An all or nothing mindset. It's because if we fail one time, we think we're a failure, which is a lie from Satan. He's working overtime on you, friends. He's working overtime. I failed to forget it. We have to remember that being consistent isn't the same thing as being perfect. There's, no, there's, there's so much of a big difference between the two. Give yourself grace and mercy and kindness. Being consistent is not the same thing as being perfect. Here's what we know. It's what we know, right? So I shared about dating my wife, Kathy, and I think it's important. I believe that it's an atomic habit or a key habit that every marriage relationship should have. I'm not defining how it should be done, but I believe it should be done. But I will give you a few keys. It's the key to, key to loving your spouse in the same way that you love them to marry them. And your spouse desires that more than they say they do. I promise you, both men and women they desire that. Doesn't need to be expensive. Doesn't need to be fancy. In fact, I would suggest keep it as simple as possible. In fact, some of the, some of the better probably dates are things that are not so expensive. Not so complex. Not, but they are consistent. They're intentional and they're selfless. Are you going to mess? Sure. Uh, we do. We still do. There are just things that get in the way. But you want to get back on and in that rhythm. Be intentional and place, place it back in your calendar. If you're, if you're married or you're dating, re-engage. Plan to fail, though. Plan to fail. That Know that the momentary failure is, not, is actually part of the process. It's just part of the process. It's building the muscle. It's an illusion, though, when we think that it's we have to have it done perfectly. In fact, I would say that there may be a few of us here this morning that are on the edge of following Jesus or we're not following Jesus yet. And it's all around this question. This question of do I have to be perfect to follow him? What if I mess up? Does it mean that I'm not? What if I cuss or give somebody the bird? Or lose my temper, whatever it is. I mean, it, it sometimes causes us to go, I can't do that. Well, the truth is that Jesus called everyone to follow him, and he brings about the change in us. It's not about perfection, it's about consistency. You're going to miss, you, you decide to, to eat certain foods, you, you're going to get off that bandwagon, but it's getting back on it that's part of it. You're, you've decided to pay down that debt, but you then buy the thing that puts you further into debt. Get back on that band. I mean, it's just consistency. It's training ourselves to be consistent in those things that are important. Number three, enjoy the process. Yep, enjoy the process. This is what we're going to do. We're going to start with a why. We're going to plan to fail, and we're going we're to do is enjoy the process. We're going to Enjoy the process. Daniel wasn't praying because he, it was a duty. He wasn't praying because it was a duty. He just loved his time with God. I believe that. He loved the intimacy. He, he knew. He, he, here's what I know about him because I know his character. He wasn't saying, hey, I'm, I'm all this stuff and I'm going to get promoted. It wasn't about that. It was about knowing God. Knowing him intimately. Here's the mistake we make often. We obsess about the goal. 
So you make a goal. I want to lose 20 pounds. I've got to pay off both credit cards. I've got to read through the whole Bible. Whatever your goal is, right? And we're, when we're inconsistent, we tend to lose sight of the goal and we make it more difficult than it needs to be. Life is going to be tough. There are going to be roads that are not going to be smooth. But it's not about obsessing about the goal. We fall in love with the process or we enjoy the process. And what I know is that consistency helps us in the process. And we fall in love with that process over and over again. And when you achieve When you achieve today's goal or today's success, you will honor God today. That's our call. Our call is success when you honor God today. That's what success is. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pre-decide before we face that decision. We're We're going to learn to pre-decide. But we can't, as we've already said through this message and already in the service, we can't do it on our own. We may say, I'm consistent, but... We're only consistent with God being our helper or with God's help. So let's say this together. With God's help, I am consistent. Can we say that together? It's on the screen. With God's help, I am consistent. With God's help. That's the only way. That is truly the only way. It's the key to this whole thing. Meaning you can't be consistent on your own. Paul says, I don't even understand myself well. He asked a question later in his text, who can deliver me in Romans 7, who can deliver me from this body of inconsistency, this body of death? And he said, as we sang, praise be to Jesus Christ. He is the one who can empower us to live a life that honors God. He is the only one. So we pre-decide not on our willpower, but with God being our helper. With God being our helper. We, we want to we be consistent. We have to decide what area it's going to be. It may just be a moment. To, uh, you just want to close your eyes and ask the question, where, Lord, do you want me to be more consistent? Where is it that I'm not that you're asking me to that will change what, I'm, what I desire but needs to be led to a deeper way? deeper why. So close your eyes. I believe the Holy Spirit's here, if you would. And ask, Lord, where is it? Where is it that you want me to be more consistent? Where is it that I need you to help me? Three times a day, Daniel said, I seek the Lord. He pre-decided. That's not going to happen by accident. It's a decision that is made ahead of time. You start with a why. You know you're not perfect, so you plan to fail. And you enjoy the process. And the great news is, is you're, you're not successful when you achieve the future goal. You're successful when you honor God today. When you honor God today with God being your helper. Let's pray. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would do surgery on our hearts today and that we'd be open to what you want to say to us but what you want to do through us. God, you're the only one that can help us overcome our sin nature of inconsistency It's only by the Holy Spirit we're weak, but you're strong. You're consistent. We're inconsistent. So we decide, we pre-decide that you, we want you to help us with our consistency. We want you, Lord, to help us in our area of inconsistency. Uh, Friends, uh, all eyes closed, heads bowed for privacy How many of you have an area of your life you want to be more consistent in? Would you raise your hand? Yes. Thank you. Father, I pray that your spirit would empower us, that you would give us a clear and compelling why connected to glorifying you. 
God, help us to understand that because we are fallen people, we're not going to be perfect, but we are going to enjoy and love the process of honoring you every single day, doing what you called us to do, and we trust you for the results. God, build our faith that we're not successful in the future when we achieve what we hope to achieve, but God, we are successful when we honor and live for you every single day, starting today. Empower us, God, to be a church that is consistent to showing your love, consistently being full of grace, consistently being generous, consistently confessing our sins, consistently being righteous before you, consistently being your light in a dark world. May we honor you with consistency, pre-deciding this is one way we worship you and live empowered by your spirit. Lord, we're grateful, grateful for the empowering that you give. I think one of the, one of the things most of us can recognize is that we can be really inconsistent in some of the bigger, what I may call some of the moral areas of life. We, we tell lies, we cheat, we hurt people, we're selfish, we can be mean, we can be cruel, we can be hateful, we can be deceitful and full of pride, and the list goes on. And you find yourself sometimes saying, hey, God, this thing, I mean, if there is God, he, I'm sure he's pretty good. I kind of like to know him. But you're not getting over the, the moral big things, maybe. And the illusion is a per perfection that keeps you from surrendering to Jesus fully. And this is not just a message for those who have just, that have not surrendered, who have not said, I'm following Jesus, but it's for all of us who have not allowed the Holy Spirit to control our lives. This is why Jesus came. He sent Jesus for sinners. Jesus was the lamb who shed his blood and died and raised him from the dead so that, you're, so that your inconsistency, the biblical term for that is your sinfulness, so my sinfulness could be forgiven. And here's the amazing thing. When you surrender to Jesus, he forgives and fills us with his Holy Spirit. Maybe you've you recognize that you're not the person you wished you would be in this moment. Can I just encourage you, remind you, tell you, that that's why Jesus came. For those of us who, somebody were asked, say, I'm a, I'm a follower, yet you, you recognize and realize you don't resemble Jesus as you would like, and maybe as he's already said, I just encourage you to open yourself up to believe this morning and ask for a refilling. And for those who have never said yes this morning, to Jesus, to surrender your life to Jesus, to follow him. And I encourage you to pray this prayer that's on the screen or a prayer that you authentically pray, pray to God. But it goes something like this. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy, grace, and love found in and through Jesus. Save me and forgive me for my sins. I give you my life and I choose to follow love and live for you because you are the only one who can make me into who I'm supposed to be. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Father, we're grateful. We're grateful that you bring us to these places where we can revisit our walk with you, and for some, start our walk. We celebrate the goodness you have poured out to us on your, through your son Jesus on the cross and the empty grave. We come wanting the resurrected life. We come saying, I believe in you. Amen. Would you stand with us as we uh, and the way we started proclaiming our belief
and pre-deciding like what Pastor Steve was saying we have to pre-decide some of these things that seem so automatic because there will be maybe those forks in the road maybe those crossroads and we need to um, constantly just be saying God I'm not going to be ashamed I'm not going to walk away I am yours and we're going to proclaim that together Church, as we go into this week, maybe some of you are feeling like, I need a moment. <laughs> I don't want to leave just yet. I need to do some business with God. And we want to support you in, in prayer because we know that prayer is the catalyst of all change, of all good things. And we want to be here to pray for you. So Pastor Steve will be up here. And maybe you're a person that wants to pray with others. We invite you to come up. Um, but as you leave today, feel free to take your conversation to the lobby. But if you're here needing prayer, we want to pray with you. So come on up. Have a great week.